<sighs> Back to the one chapter or night. One little section. <clears throat> Jesus raises a dead girl and heals a sick woman. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him <coughs> while he was by the lake. <coughs> then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came and when he saw Jesus fell at his feet. <coughs> He pleaded with, earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that we may, no, so that she may be healed and live. Synagogue leaders. Interesting Mark uses this language. Not like Pharisee. Or something. I mean, he probably was, but obviously way more humble. Oh, Pharisees dislike Jesus because they're cha he's challenging their authority and not commending them on how wonderful they they are. This guy, hey, my daughter's sick. Can you help her? You you can help her. Please come. Come heal her. <laughs> this guy. This guy, I tell you. Is truly better than every single other Pharisee. And that we read about. I can't say... Well, other than when Paul turns in. Like, maybe a few other Pharisees who... Any other Pharisee who turns, but to a Christian. But this guy, this guy, is better than all. Why? Because why is he this humble, like asking Jesus, please help? This guy's a good guy, Jairus. Good guy. So Jesus went with him. I'll say, watch um, Mike Wiener's commentary. <laughs> A large crowd followed and pressed around him. A woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. And no, this, this isn't the normal thing. Um, just this constant, like non-stop, 24-7, seven days a week, always. This isn't once a month, it's every day, of every minute, of every hour, of every, I said that backwards, oh well, day of the month. <laughs> yeah. This is some medical condition. I'm pretty sure a doctor or a nurse can describe it better than I can. <clears throat> or Wayne. Because he knows more than I do. Anyway, but no actual doctor probably can describe even better than him because, well, doctor. <laughs> anyway, she has suffered. She had suffered a great deal under care of many doctors and had spent all she had and instead of getting better she grew worse well yeah ooh that's that's sad also I don't know why I feel like I need to say this the medicine back in medical practices 
were terrible. I think blood, yeah, bloodletting was probably still a thing. Maybe wasn't it? Who am I kidding? They probably thought it was. Yeah, you oh, you're bleeding all the time. Maybe if we let out more blood. <sighs> Or even if you had a semi-competent doctor, um, they couldn't do much back then. So, yeah. But the fact she's only getting worse, uh... When she heard that, heard about Jesus, she came and she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. <coughs> he... She didn't even touch him, but just his cloak. Because she thought, if I touch, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. <clears throat> Immediately her bleeding stopped. So she was bleeding. Wow, this. Uh, and she felt her body and that, she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. And once Jesus realized that the power had gone out from him, he turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? Not me. Who touched my clothes? Think about it. The kind of perception Jesus had. You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, yet you can ask who touched me? But keep, but Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing that, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, trembling in fear, told him the truth. The, the the whole truth. Nothing but, no. That's actually what it says. The whole truth. I read it wrong first. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. When Jesus was still speaking, some of the people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother to teach her anymore? Over well, overhearing, or ignoring, that's, I guess you can technically overhear what they say, but not really care what could be perceived as ignore. Anyway, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. <coughs> Never mind, makes sense. What they said, Jesus told them, don't be afraid, just believe. <clears throat> no, it doesn't mean like only if you believe that God has power. No, God has power. But if you don't want it. I think Inspiring the Philosophy has done videos on this. This. Anyway. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, John. His the brother of James. These are his closest disciples. Again, if anyone had secret knowledge to what Jesus said, or anything else, it would be these three. Since we don't have anything from these three, that are other than what's already in the Bible, then it's bunk. There is no Gospel of Thomas. That is just a bunch of crazy people trying to hijack Christianity. Judas, Bartholomew, I don't care. What it is? Actually, don't believe a Gospel of Judas. <clears throat> I know there's like a third or like a second Judas that's not as scary, but still. <laughs> Don't. In other words, I'm just. If it's not in the Bible, take it, heavily, very skeptically. And if it's any of these weird, 
God's Gnostic or whatever Gospels, like Thomas. Yeah, just, just, just don't believe it. Brother James, when they had, when they came to the home of the synagogue leader, <coughs> Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing aloud. He went in and said to them, Why are the, all this, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. You know, I just saw something. Was the how bad they are <laughs> at medical stuff back then? It's possible someone just fell asleep and they thought she died. They died. I mean, the fact that Jesus would know this without even seeing her is pretty amazing in herself itself. But no, she most actually probably really did die. Okay, she did die. I don't know, just that thought popped into my head. Do with it what you will. Doesn't really change. Doesn't really. It's not really a contradiction. It's just a weird thought that popped into my head. It doesn't really make sense. No. She's dead. But God says she's sleeping. Sleeping. Something else is going on here. But they laughed at him. We can go watch my queen or not my stupid theory, things that just pop in my head. <laughs> at him. After he put out all of them out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha Kahum. Oh, my Hebrew is terrible. Or is that Aramaic? <laughs> and that's a dead language, so I don't really fit anyone. Anyway, that's T A L I T H A K O U M, which means little girl. I say to you, get up. All that's in those two. Wow, some languages pack a lot in little. Anyway, immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. Okay, Mark. Random little detail. <laughs> she was 12. Again, if this was made up, why would they add the fact that she's 12? This is strong, strongest detail Mark added for bond no reasons. <laughs> Felt necessary. At this, they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. Again, why no telly telly? Well, riots. People were expecting a messiah to come and overthrow Rome. If you haven't noticed yet, Jesus didn't do that. 